2007, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare changed the face of first-person shooters forever. It had dozens of memorable moments, but none of them could compare to what's one of the most influential pieces of level design of all time. This is all gilded up. Too much radiation, we'll have to go around. So the first time I saw this game was really the first time anyone saw this game, and that was at E3 2007. I remember distinctly uh, sitting there in a conference hall in LA as Infinity War came on stage and showcased their new game. Now, at that point, Infinity War had only done World War II shooters, and, and this was a real step in a different direction for them. And really, from the very first moment, you knew something special was about to, uh, to, to, to be played out before your eyes, because you know, it opened on the scene at Chernobyl, uh, you thought you were alone, and then about five seconds into the demo, Macmillan gets out of the grass in front of you. A and really, you know, fr from that moment, I just remember being really, really blown away by, by what I saw. Hold up. It's more covered. So I remember really clearly uh, the first thing I said, I think I phoned Matt actually, uh, perhaps the day after uh, I saw the demo at this conference. And I remember saying to Matt, I said, the animation is amazing. Because absolutely 100% in, this, in this, le this level would not work if Macmillan wasn't animated as well as he is. Every little thing that he does in that, right down to his running, is just perfect. He uses... Um, he uses he sort of sign language to, to signify where you want, he wants you to look and where he wants you to go. And all that has to be absolutely perfect to completely immerse you in the level. And, and without that, I don't think the level would be half as good as it is. I mean, the ideas in it are really strong. The setting is amazing. But without that animation, I really don't think it would work. Don't move. So at this point, you're asked to take out a guy in the bell tower and then someone patrolling just afterwards. And the important thing to, to remember about All Gilded Up is that there's no difficulty in taking these shots. In all of the other levels, you know, the, the challenges in the combat is in taking these people down. But in All Gilded Up, they're just standing there waiting for your bullet, essentially. The, the challenge of this level is the sneaking. You know, it's not the shooting. The shooting's secondary, and it's always intended to be so. For the whole 15 minutes of its running time, it's just an aside. It's something you have to do at certain points of time, but it's never a struggle. And that's part of the beauty of this level, is that you have to creep and sneak when you're supposed to. And if you do rely on your gun, well, you're going to fail. Call of Duty 4 came out, and I was just, the first thing that struck me was how incredibly sort of fluid it was, the movements of it. Um, and. I was just kind of drawn into it immediately with the, the kind of graphics and everything. Um, this mission in particular is one which I think sort of hides scripting quite well and it, it allows you to kind of work with the scripting rather than sort of against it. Let's go. So you jump over the pipes, you're into this field, it looks like a bit of an open area, and Macmillan says get on your stomach. So you're down on your stomach, you, you're wondering, well, what's going on here? And then slowly, ever so slowly, you see these heads kind of bobbing above the, the line of the grass, and you think, oh right, there's a, there's a soldier coming to, oh no, wait a minute, there's two, no, three, four, and suddenly there's like five or six soldiers coming towards you, and then you can hear a tank. And, and this was at the point at which the, the E3 demo, originally when I saw this level, the E3 demo ended. Now you can imagine what that was like. You're wondering, how the hell are we supposed to get past this? And that really is the, it's clever because that's what the player's thinking at that time. As he sees more and more soldiers coming towards him. As the tank gets closer, he's thinking, what am I supposed to do now? So you're lying in the long grass and you're just thinking, crap, there's no way out of this. And there really isn't. All you've got to do is stay still and just see it out. I mean, as it happens, the guys are going to walk past you, the tanks are going to roll past you. 
what you've got to worry about is, are you going to be in their way? Are you going to be lying in the spot that someone's going to put his boot in and then have a whole army turn on you and shoot you while you're lying down? So what I tend to do, and what we did for this video, is I tend to go to the tree because you know that no one's going to walk into the tree, obviously. But you still have someone getting pretty close, so I just slowly edge out and edge back, praying that the movement isn't big enough to be noticed. Because if it is, you're dead. There's no way of shooting yourself out of this situation. And then even once, once the army has passed, which takes a fair old while, you're just lying there waiting for them to spot you. You're crawling, cr crawling away, you know, you meet up with Macmillan, you're crawling, you're crawling, there's between 30 seconds to 60 seconds of crawling after you've got past the obstacle. And this, you still have to stay down, because at any point in time, if you s stand up too early, they might spot you from behind. And this moment is so memorable because you're always waiting for that to happen, you're always waiting for it to kick off. And when it never does, it's such a relief. Follow me. Looks like they've already eliminated the men they couldn't buy out. Let's move up for a better view. Taking them out without alerting the rest isn't going to be easy. But then again, neither is sneaking past them. So at this point, Macmillan's given you a choice. He said you can shoot everyone you see, or you can get down on your belly and do some more craw crawling. And uh, you know, a lot of players would go in, all guns blazing, and uh, that's fine. Uh, uh, my personal preference is how we've played it out in the in the video here: is that get on your belly and crawl around because it extends the level. I think it also cranks up the tension a lot, and I think it's probably slightly a more realistic approach. Uh, you know, Call of Duty has always been, has always sort of pr prided itself on having a degree of realism in there. You know, I know that it's kind of jumped the shark a few times since, but at the time, you know, Modern Warfare was fairly sort of close to reality. And I think, you know, crawling through the grass, trying to avoid confrontation is how the SAS would prefer things to be. Uh, and that's how we've done it in this playthrough, and that's how I did it in my original playthrough, and I think it makes the level much stronger for that. Stay in the shadows. Stay back. I heard Ukrainians yesterday night lost a couple of their crew in the naval complex. Эти украинские наемники Stay такие low. некомпетентные. He's mine. Они получили, что заслужил. Ой, Сюзи. Любой с боевым аптецем. Let's go. Без проблем. Радиация делает это собак с сумасшедшими силами. Ты их не доценываешь, тварыш. Forward area clear. Go. Когда я получу деньги за эту работу, я куплю мотоцикл и буду ездить по этому району. 
Ты думаешь, американцы не смогут войну с нами, пока мы славы? Эта сторона катится вниз к развалу. Stay hidden. Move up. This way. So we've had the field moment already. That's been and gone. And you think, well, you've seen the worst out. Well, in actual fact, it's about to get even tougher. There's this great bit when you enter a container with Macmillan and he opens the door. It's this beautiful animation where he just pushes it aside with his arm. And suddenly you see another army of guys. Only they're not just walking in a line towards you. And you can't just duck in the long grass and let them pass you by. You've actually got to run past them. It's absolutely terrifying. I remember when the game came out in 2007, just sitting there thinking, this is unlike anything else. You know that you can't shoot your way out of this situation. You've somehow got to get through this army encampment without getting spotted. And so you have to run from obstacle to obstacle, hide behind jeeps. Ultimately, you get under a jeep, and you start this long, long crawl beneath it, where you just see the boots of, and the legs of people walking past you. And again, same as the field, always waiting for that moment where you get spotted. There is a truck coming. We'll use it as cover. Keep moving. In particular, uh, sort of halfway through the mission itself, you get to a point at which you're sort of underneath the truck and you have nowhere else to go. You're sort of following um, the fellow in front of you. Um, by this point, uh, contrary to the start of the, of the mission, you are now surrounded by enemies um, and, and sort of taking them out isn't, isn't really a question. You sort of have to, have to stay quiet or you will die no matter what you do. Um, and luckily, uh, although it's scripted again, there's another another truck kind of pulls up in front of you and you're able to kind of crawl underneath that um, and sort of, sort of progress further and a, a very well-timed sort of uh, jump from underneath this truck lets you sort of run up behind some more cover once they've all kind of passed and then run into another sort, sort of uh, cratered area. Um, and it's, that was one of the most tense parts of this mission, I think, the, uh, the old Gilly Duck mission. So I really enjoyed that. Ready? Go! Walk fast! Got one source. Might just keep moving. That's way. So the level's really linear, actually. I mean, if you if you think about it, you're only really heading in one direction, but it's very cleverly done by Infinity Ward, and actually it's a trick they repeat quite often throughout their games. There's those moments where Macmillan kind of turns around to you and says, you can do this or you can do this, it's your choice. Whichever way you, you go, it doesn't really make that much difference to the direction you're headed in the level. And of course you've got the radioactive zones on either side of you to kind of cone you in, but it really doesn't matter because the, the tension, they're so tense, this whole level. And it's, it's really, they really look to Hollywood for how to, how to make it a kind of thrill ride. The music is perfect and the... The, the moments, you know, the calm before the storm and the, the peaks and the troughs are perfect. And, and that's really why this level doesn't, doesn't, it isn't affected by the fact that it's linear. In fact, if anything, it, it propels it forward, the fact that you have to move forward the whole time. And Macmillan, in a lot of ways, is the one that's driving you there. Stop. So you've been through all the trials and tribulations of the level. You think you've seen everything. You think, finally, you've got past all the people. Nothing can go wrong. I'm almost there at my target. I can set up the sniper rifle. We're, we're home, home free. And then a dog appears. And you walk into this area and you see this dog snacking on a dead guard. And you just think, not now, not now. As it happens, you can sneak past him. You can run to the far wall and slowly creep uh, through to the following building. Um, but there's a moment, and there was a moment when we were recording this, in fact, when I was playing it again, where it had me fooled. The, dog sees you, he turns around, he snarls at you, and of course, World at War, you know, you're fighting a lot of dogs in that, and when I was playing it again, I was thinking, oh no, I've got to snap its neck, you don't have to worry about that, but they get you, Infinity will get you, they're the masters of their game, like, they know what's going to make you jump, what's going to make you frightened, and they throw it all into this level, it's the tensest thing I've ever played in a game. Move up. So this uh, building complex is part of Pripyat, which is the which is the town in real life that was was decimated by the Chernobyl disaster. And it's such an evocative setting; it's it's unbelievable. I mean, if you look at the real life photos of this place, it's really, really creepy because it's just a ghost town. And they describe it actually. I think Macmillan describes it as a ghost town in in, in this level. And as you're sort of climbing up through this apartment complex, expecting the firefight to start in in earnest, actually Infinity War stick to their guns. This is a stealth level and they, they continue making it a stealth level all the way through until the end, right the way up until you get to the top and you get your sniper rifle out. This is a quiet, quiet level, 
unless you want to go out all guns blazing, in which case I think you ruin the effect here. Cr you know, climbing these staircases and, and seeing this destroyed city is just p all part of the magic of this level. There's the hotel. We should be able to observe the exchange from the top floor up there. Let's move. Lieutenant Price. So everything's building up until this point, the point you take the shot, and, and Infinity Ward are even throwing little bits and bobs in here. I mean, you have to watch f the flag. You have to watch the flag for the wind direction. Uh, you have to make sure that you're, you've got the, you're taking into account gravity. I mean, these are things that, that Infinity Ward have just thrown in there. That, you know, they use it once and then, th then throw that idea away. And, I, and that's, that's the kind of thing that makes this level so special. So the sniper moment at the end of the level really teaches you to, you know, to go back to something the whole level has been ask asking you to do, and that's be patient. You've got to wait and wait a long time. You know, the, the wind's blowing, and you're thinking, right, I've got to time my shot right. Do I wait till the wind dies down? Do I take that gamble? I mean, it might not. You don't know at the time when you're first playing it. You don't know that the wind's going to stop. You think, right, I've got to judge it just right. And then there's this moment where you think you've got the shot, you think you've got it lined up, you're about to pull the trigger. And then a helicopter comes into you and totally ruins your game. So you put off, you, you sit back, think, right, collect my thoughts, let the helicopter pass. And then we're back to the target, back to Sakai. If you've got to take him down again, you've got to line it all up again. And then you've got this waiting game. Do I wait and see what happens with the wind? Because, you know, it might not die down, he might get in the car and drive away. It's just this great end to a fantastic level. Oh, of course, it's not the end of the level. It continues and there are some shootouts afterwards and it's nowhere near as good as, as the first half. But this sniper section is a brilliant way to bring everything to a head. What loss will take care of the rest. So after you make the shot and you escape from the building, really, uh, the level's not quite as good after that. I mean, it's it, up until that point, it's been really tightly scripted, but, uh, but after that, it just descends into a sort of more traditional firefight, I guess. But it doesn't really matter because what's come before is, is so strong. It, 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 for, for the time, it felt so innovative and so refreshing that it, di it didn't matter. And, you know, since then, we've seen so many developers try to emulate this kind of feel, this sort of real, like, cinematic kind of feel, you know, this beautiful music kind of coming in and then fading out again. These moments in the levels where, you know, things are, are building to a crescendo, a, to a, such a tense crescendo. And, and, you know, it was, for the time, it was really, I mean, Infinity Ward were the, were the masters of this and, and arguably remain the masters of it. But uh, I'd argue that they haven't actually matched or gillied up for, for just that sheer ratcheted up tension and the kind of what's going to happen next feel.